We see so many colours around us every day. Some vivid, some dull and some neon. Have you ever wondered where these colours come from? Is the colour you see on an object the colour of the object itself? Or is it something else? After performing this activity, some of your questions might have been answered or more questions may have been raised. Some things that you must have understood for sure from this experiment were that when yellow and blue mix, they make green. When yellow and pink mix, they make an orangish red. When pink and blue mix, they make purple. And finally, in the middle, when blue, yellow and pink mix, they make a dark brownish colour. After observing all of this, let's try to understand how this occurs. In this guide, we will try answering the why, how and when of visible colours and finally get to what colour subtraction is. We will then try to relate these concepts to the real world and how we see what we see every day. Apart from the filter paper, you can find all the other materials required at home itself. The filter paper will be available in the market at an affordable rate, but might be a little hard to find. We will provide you with it so that you can experiment with different variations and understand the concepts behind colours completely. Before we talk about colour subtraction, we need to first familiarise ourselves with the basics. Where does colour come from? The colour of the objects that we see is largely due to the way those objects interact with light and ultimately reflect or transmit it to our eyes. The colour of an object is not actually within the object itself. Rather, the colour is in the light that shines upon it and is ultimately reflected or transmitted to our eyes. We know that the visible light spectrum consists of a range of frequencies, each of which corresponds to a specific colour. So when this visible light strikes an object and gets reflected to our eyes, we identify that object with the colour that got reflected. That is, if an object is green in colour, it means that it is reflecting only the green light from the spectrum and absorbing the rest. On the other hand, say a light of frequency 520 nanometers shines upon a sheet of white paper. This light gets reflected off the paper and reaches your eyes and then you will see the paper as green, which has a wavelength of 500 to 570 nanometers. Another thing to know before we jump into colour subtraction is about white light. What is the wavelength of white? White light is not a colour, in fact, it is a combination of all the colours that we see. So the Vibgyor colours, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red, and everything in between. So it does not have a wavelength of its own, but is inclusive of all the wavelengths of all the colours from violet to red. We already know that combining the seven colours of the rainbow provides white light. But combining only three distinct frequencies of light can also produce white light, provided that they are widely separated on the visible light spectrum. Any three colours of frequencies of light that produce white light when combined with the correct intensity are called primary colours of light. There are a variety of sets of primary colours, the most common set of primary colours is red, R, green, G, and blue, B. So R plus G plus B gives you W, which is white light. Similar to our experiment in the beginning, combining two primary colours can give a wide variety of secondary colours as shown in the images. A very brief understanding of colour addition is that when we add two primary colours in equal intensities, it produces a third colour that is the secondary colour. So red plus green gives you yellow, which is a secondary colour. Red plus blue gives you magenta. And green plus blue gives you cyan. In fact, you can also make white light by mixing these secondary colours, cyan, magenta and yellow. Now that we understand primary colours, let's assume that white light is shining on a shirt. This would mean that red, green and blue light are shining on the shirt. If the shirt is made of a material that absorbs blue light, then the three colours wouldn't be reflected. Only two of them would be red and green. And we know from colour addition that red plus green is yellow. So we would perceive the shirt to be yellow in colour. 
And this discussion illustrates the process of color subtraction. In this process, the ultimate color appearance of an object is determined by beginning with a single color or mixture of colors and identifying which color or colors of light are subtracted from the original set, based on which get absorbed. Another example is if cyan light was shining upon the same shirt. Cyan is made up of green and blue colors. So if the blue color were absorbed as it was before, now the shirt would appear green. An immediate question that comes to mind after understanding the subtraction of colors is how does color get absorbed? Why was the blue light absorbed by the shirt? This happens due to something called pigments. Pigments absorb light. Pure pigments absorb a single frequency or color of light and compound pigments absorb more than a single frequency of light. The color of light absorbed by a pigment is merely the complementary color of that pigment. So the shirt had yellow pigments and that is why they were able to absorb blue light since yellow and blue are complementary. So pure yellow pigments absorb blue light and pure blue pigments absorb yellow light. Refer to the color wheel, opposite colors are complementary. So pure red pigments absorb cyan light and we know that cyan light is made up of blue and green. So if a shirt had pure red pigments and cyan light was shown on the shirt, then the resulting color would be black. Now that you understand how color subtraction works and how we see the colors that we do, you can perform some variations to the activity to understand these concepts better. Draw a circle and first draw the three primary colors, red, blue and green, evenly spaced. Then in between, in the spaces between the colors, draw their secondary colors to understand the concepts more clearly. You can refer to the picture. Outside of the circle, try some variations. What if you add more of blue and less of red? Do you still get magenta? Do they have to be in exact equal quantities to get the perfect magenta? Why is that? It will be a bit hard to perform experiments as you might not have access to particular wavelengths of light and also particular pigments. So we can imagine scenarios and try to answer and understand them. The first question, magenta light shines on a sheet of paper containing a yellow pigment. Determine the appearance of the paper. Yellow light shines on a sheet of paper containing a red pigment. Determine the appearance of the paper. And now yellow light shines on a sheet of paper containing a blue pigment determine the appearance of the paper. So for the first one, magenta light is thought to consist of red light and blue light. A yellow pigment is capable of absorbing blue light. Thus blue is subtracted from the light that shines on the paper. This leaves red light. If the paper reflects the red light, then the paper will look red. In the second scenario, yellow light can be thought of as consisting of red light and green light. A red pigment is capable of absorbing cyan light, that is, red paper can absorb both green and blue primary colors of light. Recall that cyan light is a mixture of green and blue. So red and green light shine on the paper, green light is subtracted. There is no need to subtract blue light since blue light is not shining on the paper. This leaves red light to be reflected. If the paper reflects the red light, then the paper will look red again. In the third scenario, yellow light can be thought of as consisting of red light and green light. A blue pigment is capable of absorbing yellow light. That is, blue paper can absorb both red and green primary colors of light. Recall that yellow is a mixture of red and green. So red and green light shine on the paper and both the red and the green light are subtracted. There is no color left to be reflected to the eye. Subsequently, the paper appears black. Hence, in terms of our experiment, it is clear that constantly adding pigments to a sheet of white paper will result in more and more colors being absorbed by the combination of colors and hence we see the intersection of the colors become blacker and blacker. In fact, this is exactly how black ink is made, combining several pigments to achieve a black color. Refer to our separation of mixtures chromatography activity to get a better understanding of this phenomenon. Now think for yourself how different it is when we add pigments together to make black. 
and when we add colors of a Newton's color wheel together to make white. As far as light and colors go, that is the difference between subtraction and addition. An eye-opener indeed. Some scientific terms that you should be familiar with. Visible light spectrum is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible to the human eye. A typical human eye will respond to wavelengths from about 390 to 700 nanometers or in frequency space from 770 terahertz to about 430 terahertz. Primary colors are those which cannot be created by mixing other colors in a given color space. A color resulting from the mixing of two primary colors is called a secondary color. Pure pigments absorb a single frequency or color of light. Compound pigments absorb more than a single frequency of light. Unlike other devices and experiments, color subtraction is not just used in certain industries or places. It is literally everywhere. Everything you see around you today is a result of color subtractions. From the paint on your walls, to the color of someone's eyes, to the color of your tiffin box. We hope that you enjoyed performing these experiments and understood a lot about colors. Color subtraction and color addition are the very basics of the world. You might not have related light and color before, but you now know that color is because of light. If you came up with any interesting experiments or variations regarding color subtraction, do let us know. We'd be happy to see what you've done. Goodbye.